Okay. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it. Camera's rolling. Okay, let's go. I'm standing here outside the DC detention facility where approximately 50 or so people were arrested and related to the January 6th events and are still being held without bail. Last week, right here, Representative Gates, Green, and Gomer were turned away from seeing or meeting these people, but in a press conference, they recorded that they had received complaints of inhumane treatment being doled out to these prisoners. Now, back in March of this year, the Boston bomber, Sunarvu, remember him? Was allowed to sue the federal government for violating his First Amendment rights because he was not allowed to send hobby crafts to his attorney. Crafts, really? Why are these American citizens being treated worse than the Boston bomber? It's a good question. Where is Attorney General Merrick Garland? According to a reporting by Revolver News and Tucker Carlson, about three months before January 6th, the FBI arrested 14 people planning to kidnap Governor Whitmer and overthrow the Michigan state government. Out of those 14 people, it turned out that at least five were undercover agents of the federal government. Out of those 14, it turned out that at least five were undercover agents and federal informants. The plot's explosive expert was an FBI agent. The plot's explosive expert was an FBI agent. The head of the transportation for the group turned out to be an FBI agent, an undercover FBI agent. The head of security turned out to be an undercover FBI informant. Two more members of the plot were FBI agents. Then just days after the plot was foiled, oh, me. FBI you director... Get permission? What's that? Did you guys get permission to come in? Is this public or is it this side? You can't be on this side, you can't be on the other side of the street. You know, well, this sidewalk is public property. Now, I understand what you're saying, sir, but I'm talking to my supervisor to see if you guys have to be across the street. Well, I guess he's going to have to call the authorities and tell us because this is public property. Call the authorities on him. I think I want to go to the other side. This is ridiculous. Just leave that. Move it right over there to that car. Take a picture of it? Okay. All right. We're, we're going to move across. Just right there. They they like to escalate really quickly. Yeah, I wouldn't, well, yeah, I wouldn't mess with that. How's the framing? Uh, we're good on there. We're good on there. So here's his cop friend already. Grab the live one so you can film this. Just follow. Me. Right next to these cars. Yeah, we're just shooting a little bit. Not bothering you. But uh, let me see where you're standing at. Okay. Then he has problems. All right. Just filming right here on a public sidewalk. We realize that we're not we're not going to be able to get away with doing that on on federal property, but this is a public sidewalk. And we're not in the right of way. Come in. 
the saddle up. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and keep shooting this. On. Okay, so can we just use both hands and try to be smoother? Because I want to get a nice smooth shot of this. Are we going to start from the top? Yeah. Okay, we're on. I'm standing outside a DC detention facility where they're trying to prevent us from filming this. We're approximately 50 or so people who were arrested related to the January 6th events are being held without bail. Last week, Representative Gates, Green, and Gomer were turned away from seeing or meeting these people, but in a press conference, they reported that they have received complaints of inhumane treatment being doled out to these prisoners. Back in March of this year, the Boston bomber, Sunarvu, remember him? Was allowed to sue the government for violating his First Amendment rights because he was not allowed to send hobby crafts to his attorney, crafts. Why are these American citizens being treated worse than the Boston bomber? Where is Attorney General Merrick Garland? According to the reporter, according to reporting by Revolver News and Tucker Carlson, about three months before, thank you, Mr. Lee. About three months before the January 6th event, the FBI arrested 14 people for planning to kidnap Michigan Governor Whitmer and overthrow the state government of Michigan. Out of those 14 people that were arrested, it turned out that at least five were undercover agents and federal informants. The plot's explosive expert was an FBI agent. The head of the transportation for the group turned out to be an undercover FBI agent. The head of security turned out to be an undercover FBI informant. Two more members of the plot were FBI agents. Then just days after the plot was foiled, FBI director Christopher Wray was quietly promoted, or he quietly promoted Stephen Antoano, the FBI special agent in charge of the Michigan plot operation to a DC post where he conveniently now oversees the January 6th investigation. According to Stephen D'Antuano, the group allegedly involved in the plot against the Capitol is, wait for it, the Three Percenters, which is the same group that the FBI was involved with and who they blame the plot in Michigan on. So how is it that the FBI had no clue of the alleged plot against the Capitol by the same group? It is, ju is it just a coincidence that wherever Stephen D'Antuano goes, he comes across a plot by the three percenters. Or maybe the FBI were the ones instigating something at the Capitol, just as they were in Michigan. What is the role of the FBI in animating and orchestrating the events that happened on January 6th? Christopher Ray will not directly answer the question. Why is Christopher Ray avoiding the question? This is America. How much longer are they planning to hide whatever's going on behind these doors? So let's also talk for a moment about this sham January 6th commission that Nancy Pelosi has put together. She couldn't even bother to pretend to have a fair hearing. For a little bit of backstory, Congress uh, voted on this January 6th commission and they disagreed with having it. It did not pass the Senate passed the House, but it did not pass the Senate. Nancy Pelosi decided to have the hearing anyways, and she brought in four officers to testify. This wind is terrible. She brought in four officers to testify, and I want to first say that I think, I want to say that I feel bad for some of the officers that were involved in the January 6th event. I don't wanna be discompassionate to that because I think that there were a lot of them who probably didn't actually know what was going on. They probably didn't realize the level of threat that they were under because their leadership had left them hanging out to dry. The Pelosi and her leadership turned down uh, capital, additional Capitol Police 
They turned down uh, National Guard. They did not prepare the Capitol as they have in many times when I've been there where there was gonna be events on the mall. When you have a group of maybe half a million people traveling from the Ellipse down to the Capitol, you would think that you would have some protections in place. So let's talk about those four officers. First of all, the level of weeniness of these people was unbelievable. Just, just absolute wimps. They made a mockery of what it is to be uh, a man in uniform or a woman in uniform. Not only that, but the next day, I saw one of them on Don Lemon's show telling him how much he loved him and how tight their families were and giving him a hug. So I want to I want to ride two two razor sharp edges here. Number one, I think that there were probably people, officers in D.C. that were ill-informed and unprotected on January 6th. But I also believe that this hearing that Nancy Pelosi held was a complete sham. And it was only for the purpose of gaining political sound bites that they can use in future elections. And it's disgusting that that's what the demolition party has devolved into to where they're willing to just hold and use federal funds and federal uh, property and time just to get political points. So I wanna know what's going on inside of this prison. Clearly, members of Congress wanna know what's going on inside this prison. I think most of America wants to know what's going on inside this prison. Do you wanna know what's going on inside this prison? Yeah. What do you think's going on in here? Wrapping it up. Let's end the. We can end the live video too. Okay. Would you like to thank everyone for checking in? Thank you. I'm I'm uh, I'm deeply concerned about what's going on in our system. I'm concerned about American people that are being held in this prison, whose rights are being violated. What's crazy about this is when President Trump was in office, he was very hard on the UN. The UN allows this kind of stuff to happen when they're not supposed to in other countries. And I am utterly ashamed that it's happening right here in the United States. Some of these people might be guilty. Some of them aren't. We don't know. The point is, is that we have rules and laws for how people are supposed to be detained. And if those are not being followed, and these are Americans, we've got bigger problems than just 50 people in jail. The fact that we have potentially have, have an FBI not potentially. We know that the FBI was involved in the plot in Michigan. We know that there's a history dating back all the way to the Obama era days when the federal government was being uh, was being armed against citizens and that that uh, that information, basically the information systems within the federal government were being used to spy on citizens, which is illegal and it has to stop. So we need, as the people, we need to remember that this, this country operates, this government gets its power on our consent. And if we don't give them consent, they don't have the power. The Constitution gives them a framework for where they're supposed to operate and where they have authority to operate. And I believe that they're operating outside of that, those bounds right now. And we, the people, have to stand.